This episode of the Kill Innovations podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You can become a supporter by visiting shop.philmckinney.com and making a contribution. Your support helps defray the cost to produce, host, and stream the show. As always, any profits are donated to charities such as hackingautism.org. I'm Phil McKinney, and welcome to Season 11 of the Kill Innovations Podcast, a show about ideas, creativity, and innovation. Everyone knows of the old saying, great minds think alike. Usually said as a kind of a joke when two people have the same idea at the same time. But just how true is that statement? In fact, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that bigger, better innovations happen when people of widely different backgrounds and ideas come together and combine their interests. In 2004, Franz Johansson published his best-selling book, The Medici Effect, a groundbreaking work outlining a phenomenon of the same name that the author had come to recognize in the world of innovation. The theory draws upon the history of the wealthy and sophisticated Medici family of 14th century Italy. Their patronage facilitated the intersection of groups of artisans from all over Europe, including painters, poets, scientists, and philosophers, who came together and ended up pooling their collective ideas in many ways. This meeting of highly skilled, creative individuals from varying backgrounds and professions largely spearheaded the Renaissance period, which was one of the most innovative and productive periods of human history across the field of invention, art, philosophy, and science. So what exactly is the Medici effect? In his research, Johansson used the term to describe the idea that the best concepts and innovations are developed at the intersections of brilliant minds from all walks of life. That new ideas are really just new combinations of old ideas. People from different regions, professions, mindsets, industries, and cultures can come together to form some of the best, most innovative ideas and solutions of their century. His theory has been proven time and time again throughout history, and into the present. This ability to see the opportunity created by connecting separate ideas together is what is called associative fluency. It's the skill to see what could be from disparate activities, technologies, and ideas. In serial entrepreneurs, their associative fluency skill is highly tuned to see what others don't see. One of the most exciting fields where this is evidenced is that of biomimicry architecture. Architecture that imitates various qualities of the natural world, bringing engineering, design, and biology together. For example, the architect, Mike Pierce, was commissioned to design an enormous shopping and office complex in Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe. The catch? The developers wanted this building to use passive climate control systems. For example, one that did not employ central air conditioning. While this may sound impossible, Pierce knew that there was already such structures in existence, such as termite mounds. African termites must keep their mounds at a steady temperature of 87 degrees in order to grow the fungus that is their primary food source. When you take into consideration the drastic variation in temperatures between night and day on the African savanna, it is truly remarkable that they managed to regulate the structure's temperature so precisely. They do it by outfitting their mounds with unique ventilation systems originating around the base. By opening and closing literally valves connected to the system, the termites are able to control the movement of air through the structure. Hot air rises and is vented towards the top of the structure, which pulls cooler air in from the bottom. By doing so, they can regulate the temperature of these mounds regardless of the external temperature. By taking inspiration from the field of biology and working with a team of engineers that specializes in sustainable building, Pierce designed the largest building in the capital, which maintains a comfortable temperature throughout the day by cycling out hot air through panels and vents and storing cool night air to be drawn through the building during the day. This building is approximately 90% more energy efficient than the buildings around it, And the design saved the developers 3.5 million U.S. dollars because it didn't require the installation of an air conditioning system. We can see the results of the Medici effect more often than ever thanks to the widening reach of the internet. One such example is the online protein folding game called Fold It, developed by programmers and researchers at the University of Washington. 
The game gives players the same tools and restrictions real scientists would have when unscrambling these complex proteins. In 2011, a group of gamers, yes, computer gamers, came together and were able to solve a puzzle which had stumped scientists for decades. The structure of the extremely complex AIDS-related enzyme, MPMV. The group was able to solve this highly complex scientific puzzle in only three weeks, paving the way for new age treatment breakthroughs. Similarly, groups have come together over the internet to solve crimes, locate bullies and animal abusers, and even create the pilot and plot of an animated children's show. They have developed video games, music, ideas, web comics, designs, and art that pursues the boundaries of traditional definition of the world. Like the original Medici family, the internet facilitates the coming together of diverse minds from all over the globe for big, groundbreaking, and innovative ideas, and also for things as small as creatively naming a stray cat. Namely, the internet has made the world a much smaller place, but one with almost infinitely more potential. Innovators can connect with one another more easily than ever, with the most successful ones taking advantage of their associative fluency to seek out disparate knowledge and creators in diverse fields that could provide the spark for their next great idea. If you enjoyed today's show, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, or wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can find all the links and resources for this episode, along with every other episode going back to 2005 at filmmckinney.com. Just click on podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, such as your thoughts on the new format for the show, topics you would like covered, or any questions you might have. Ping me on Twitter at Phil McKinney, all one word, or you can find me over on LinkedIn and Facebook. You can find all the links where I hang out on social media at PhilMcKinney.com. This podcast is a work of passion. It's my way to pay back the time and energy an early mentor invested in my career. His ask of me was to pay it forward. And my ask of you is to pay it forward by helping others know about the podcast, such as posting a comment on iTunes, sharing a show on Facebook, or simply sending an email to someone who you think might enjoy the content. As always, thanks for listening.